Hi, my name is Matt St. John. I'm one of the sales executives here at B Technologies. And today I want to take you through a quick video of how to process a shipment through Starship for Sage 300. So here is the Starship program. And first off, the nice thing with Starship is as a shipper, I can actually process all my different shipment types right through Starship. So Starship is multi-carrier, multi-mode. And technically, I don't even need access to Sage 300. So I actually don't even need it installed on my shipping machine. Now, in the upper left-hand side is our source document. So here, as you can see, we can pull by sales order number, but we can also go by customer, shipment, or even by invoices. Now, for the sake of this video, we'll, we'll grab by sales order number. Now, I can manually type that in. Uh, if my pick sheets or whatever I'm shipping against happen to be barcoded, I can even just use a regular wedge type scanner and scan in that barcoded information. Now with the magnifying glass, I am able to see all the shipments or I should say orders that I have inside of 300. From there, I can get into applying filters. I could sort by any of these columns. I can even get into doing batch processing where I can select as many orders as I like, click process selected. And if I click OK one more time, what Starship's going to do is just start generating shipping documents for all those orders that I selected, of course, processing them through and sending back shipping information into Sage 300. Now, with the integration, we are going to pull an order header as well as line item detail from, in this case, again, a sales order. Uh, our Field mapping is very simple, and map fields can actually have a one-to-many relationship. So just based off the ship via carrier service billing account information is automatically going to be populated for me. Now, if I'm doing third-party or collect shipments, I can streamline those shipments as well, where Starship automatically selects third-party or collect and brings in the customer's account number. Uh, sender, of course, that's the company we're pulling the order from inside of 300, and recipient is the ship to from this sales order. Now, Starship will do address validation. We do validate zip plus four, as well as the residential commercial flag validation. So it's going to help save on those address correction fees, as well as the residential commercial flag. Okay, uh, down below is the packaging view. So this is where all that line item detail comes in. And first off here, as you can see, this desk lamp has automatically been packaged for me. So with Starship, it could automatically learn packaging scenarios or you can manually set them up. Now, packaging scenarios are nice. It is currently just one item, one box, but it is, a, again, a nice feature where, hey, this lamp, it knows every time it goes, it goes in a lamp box, so it's packaged for me. Now, my system, I'm set up that if there are, are no other packaging scenarios for these remaining items, they do come in as loose items. And then from there, I can add a single package one at a time, or we even have a repeat box function where if this was a large order, I could say, you know what, Starship, I need 10 boxes, and click OK, and it would give me 10 boxes. After that, it'd simply be drag and dropping items. Uh, in this case, we'll just grab all these loose items, put them in the lamp box because I know they fit. Um, but with that being said, the item to box detail is not required inside of Starship. So again, if you do have a large order, you don't want your shipper to have to put each item in a box. You don't have to. Of course, as long as it's got a weight, uh, Starship would process them. All right. Now, the lamp box, that's just part of Starship's packaging database. So we allow you to set up and store your own custom boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. But the nice thing with using the packages is the dimensions will automatically populate for your shipper. Underneath that, we have the actual weight. So here, we can grab weights from a scale. I can manually type them in, or in my system, I'm just grabbing them from Sage 300. Now, next to that is the bill weight. So as you can see here, I'm trying to sneak this out the door at 5.5 pounds, but according to UPS, the dimensional weights on this is actually 19 pounds. So that's what it's gonna bill it at, all right? So we're gonna help prevent those dimensional correction fees as well. And then back down in the packaging view, I'm going to quickly select the line item here uh, just to get into the line item detail. But we can also, again, I'm pulling item information right from inside of Sage. But Starship will also start storing your inventory items. And we do this because a lot of times, you know, there's not a spot for, say, NMFC codes. If you're doing international shipments, you know, we have a database where you can store all the international information, even a lookup for Schedule B or harmonized codes. Right. And any of that information, if it was missing, once I add it and click OK, Starship is going to save it, so it's going to be there for me next time. 
Um, I'm just going to go to the international tab here. So with UPS, as you can see, we support any of the carrier functionality. So here, um, they're the paperless invoicing where they send all the uh, international documents electronically. I'm just going to deselect that. But as you can see, those can be defaulted to be always selected. I can deselect them or even set up rules that, you know, kind of like a trigger that when and when we want to uh, select those. All right. Usually next step then is rate shopping. Uh, so I'm going to click the green dollar icon or I could go to the rate shop tab. But when I rate shop, so with Starship, we have integrations with over 24 different LTL carriers. Um, of course, UPS, FedEx, and USPS. Uh, but the carrier integration is going to allow you to electronically rate shop your shipments. We also have a standalone, so you could actually rate shop outside of Starship. But here, as you see, we are going to return your live negotiated contract rates that you have with the different carriers. I could also see list. Or if I wanted to, estimated you know, delivery dates, I can change. Um, can even take this a step further and set up what we call ship via rules, where I can tell Starship, you know what, always rate shop all my shipments and do criteria like, hey, always select the carrier service that's the least expensive. So again, another way to streamline your, your whole shipping process. Charges tab, this is just a breakdown of the charges. You don't have to click on this to process a shipment. Uh, I just show it so we can get talk about freight rules real quick. So here I do have a freight rule set up. And as you can see, it is a percentage. And I'm looking inside of 300. And I'm telling Starship, hey, anytime it's cu this customer, they get a 10% discount. So freight rules can be percentages, min, max, flat rates. These criteria or triggers can go all the way down to line item detail. So you can even say, hey, Anytime item one, two, three is on an order, you know, automatically add $5 because we maybe have to use additional bubble wrap. When I'm ready to actually ship and process, I can click the ship and process button or the F5 key, which is the shortcut key. Uh, can also give you the option if you wanted to save a shipment, I could actually just click save and then come back and finish the order up later. Uh, but in this case, I click ship and process. So when I do that, that is when Starship is sending all the information off to UPS and we'll be returning those tracking numbers, a certified label from UPS. And of course, for the sake of the video, all my documents are going to preview, uh, but most certainly these could just go right to a printer. You could also save them to a network folder, or if you wanted to, you could also preview them as well. So I am also using, this as our smart label. And as you can see, the smart label will print a shipping label and packing list together. Uh, but most certainly you can send the shipping label to a thermal printer. You also have the option if you want to use the packing list, that could also go to a thermal printer. Or of course, you can send it to a laser printer. Now our documents can be customized. So here I have a company logo on there. Uh, unlimited templates and with each custom template you can get into assigning printing rules so again maybe this customer wants uh, you know they need that logo on their packing list so you can create a template for that customer assign a printing rule and then that document or that template would only print when it's for that certain customer now here's our commercial invoice order header line item detail information automatically going to populate and then i have customized this customized this form so it's signed and dated um, so again, one last thing as a shipper, I have to worry about stopping and signing and filling out paperwork. Uh, same thing for the NAFTA form, you know, signed, dated, ready to go. Okay, so those are my documents. Now with Starship, again, as a shipper, I stay inside Starship. So I'm just now in that rinse repeat cycle. I'm going to move on and select my next, again, in this case, sales order. But I'll minimize Starship and go into Sage 300 here. We'll put on a different hat and we'll go into the shipment screen. So even though I pulled by sales order number, Starship is still gonna create the shipment record inside of Sage 300. So here on the shipment, here's the miscellaneous. So that is the freight amount. That's when we're writing back to a miscellaneous. Tracking numbers over there in the tracking number column. On the customer column, I'll write back tracking number here. And then on the totals column, you know, here I have some comments coming back and you can set these up however you want, what comment, you know, information you want to write back, uh, but we can write back to that comment, comment line and then the freight charges, of course. So again, this is a really quick 40,000 foot overview of Starship. Um, you know, if you would 
like further information, please feel free to contact me. I'll put up my information here because, uh, again, that was a, a quick go through. Uh, be more than happy to sit down and we can do a live one on one demo, you know, show you different shipping scenarios that, you know, of course, definitely relate to you. And I, gosh, there's a lot of add on features uh, that are included with Starship that I didn't even get into. But again, thank you so much for your time and please feel free to reach out to me.